Hi parents, it's Mr Chan here. Um, I've had some requests which I'm working through. The first one is reading at home, some top tips of Key Stage 1. Now I'm not going to go into the entirety of how to work with phonics. Um, that takes quite a long time. Our teachers, our, our teaching assistants have a lot of training to do with that. But I've been asked for some tips for reading at home. So I'm going to give you my top tips and um, hopefully they'll be helpful. So the first tip is um, read with your child, but also read to your child. So it's really important that they do reading. Now what I've found with my daughter, she's in year two, is that if you take it in turns to read a page each, so if you read a page, then they read a page, um, not only does that um, help your child to listen to you reading, it also gives them a really good example of, of how to read, of how to pronounce the words, and sometimes it's really good to pretend that maybe you don't know some of the words either and sound them out yourself. So if you're looking at a word, um, maybe pick one or two words on that page and sound that word out or say, oh, I can't sound that one out, I'm not sure what to do. And if that's the case, I'll tell you what to do with that as well. Read little and often. I'd say a minimum of 10 minutes a day, but if you could do 15, that would be great, or a couple of 10 minute slots during your day. Just find that time, maybe even note it down so that your child can say to you, it's reading time, um, they'll really enjoy that. So that's really important as well. So the first top tip is get excited about the book. Don't just think, oh, it's reading time, I've got to do the reading. Actually get excited, and even if it's a book that they've read before, look at the cover, ask questions to get them interested. So I've got one here, just one more, which is my ice cream one. Um, ask them questions, have you ever had a great big ice cream? What ice creams can you see there? Which one would be your favorite? Is your favorite on there? Um, that kind of thing, get a bit excited. Now what I've done with my daughter and my son in the past is I've, when I've got the book, I've gone, got the book, I said, right, we're going to read this book, talked about the front cover, and then I've gone to the last page, and not letting them see, I'm going, oh, wow! And they'll really want to get to the end, because they'll want to know what it is that you are excited about at the end as well. So just trying a bit of enthusiasm to get really excited about the book. It's fine to look at the pictures, so actually use the pictures to help them with their reading. What can you see? Where might they be going? What is happening? How do you know? So from this picture, as an adult, you would look straight at it and go, well, they're going for a picnic. But as a child, they may not understand that. So what can you see? What has he got in his hands? You might, they might turn around and say, they're going on holiday because he's got a suitcase. They might not know it's like a picnic basket or hamper. Um, but use the clues there as well. Where are they? They're in the grass. They've got a picnic basket or a picnic hamper. They've got a ball. They've got a picnic blanket. Where do you think they're going? What do you think they're doing? How do you know? What is happening? Well, maybe they're going on a family picnic um, because they've got the dog with them as well. So look at the pictures. Talk about the pictures. And that is perfectly fine to do because a lot of talking leads to reading, leads to understanding of language. So that's a really important thing to do. Top tip number three is sound and letter recognition. So when you're looking at it, there are words that they will know. They will have had their phonics lessons at school. And there are certain words, m, a, t, t, m, 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 a, t, m, a, t. And then you go, mat, mat, mat. So there are words that they will know. There are also um, words that you will not be able to say to them, you will not know, you will not have the phonic knowledge to say to them, oh, well, how do we do this? How do we do that? But actually, Give them the words if you want to, and if you can't, um, if you cannot sound it out, um, if it's one of those exception words, one of those tricky words, then actually you can make a list of them and just learn them as sight words. And if you want to, if they're slightly older, you can make them part of a weekly spellings test. And so you could pick those words from the book, write them out, and get the child to learn them and say them to you. And then if they can spell them, obviously if the words are too long, um, please don't. So make sure the books are age appropriate. I know it's tricky not being able to go out and getting age appropriate books, um, but if you are reading the same books over and over again, that's perfectly fine. That's not a problem at all. But if there are words that they are constantly struggling with, write those words down. You can use those words as um, words for them to learn, words for them they need to learn by sight, so sight words. Talk about the words. So talk about the meanings of some of the words. Um, and so if there is a word that's in there, can they come up with another word that has the same meaning? So it could be very simple words like happy, um, sad, good, bad, but any of those words, they're not sure. If there's a word, if you're reading the Gruffalo and it talks about the deep dark wood, then what other words could they have? Could they have forest? You know, could they have trees? That kind of 
get them to talk about it. So talk about the words within the books and especially words they don't understand. Get them to go back. What we say to the children at school is if they don't understand a word, don't just skip ahead. Try and learn what that word means. And that could be done by looking at the sentence as a whole. So you could look at the whole sentence and actually then say, well, what could that word be within that sentence? What could that word be? within that sentence um, what would make sense and then come up with alternative words for it as well um, make a prediction this is always really good fun so don't read all of the book stop at a good point and ask questions um, as teachers what we normally do is we read the book first so we know the book um, so that we know where to stop and where they could make predictions what do you think will happen next and why do you think that it's really important to ask them why because if you're saying what do you think will happen next and you're reading the Gruffalo and they start saying aliens are gonna come down from the planet blurdy bloop and they're gonna um, make everyone eat jelly where's the evidence for that with the Gruffalo you know for a fact that we're building up to him meeting the Gruffalo and most children will get that why do you think that well because everyone's talking about the Gruffalo everyone's talking about what's gonna happen um, Talk about the setting and the characters. So where is the story set? Have you read any other stories um, set in a wherever it is? And I've spoken a bit about the Gruffalo. There we go. The Gruffalo is set in the woods. So you could also have other books that they will definitely have read that have woods in them, like Going on a Bear Hunt or Where the Wild Things Are, which goes into the woods as well. And both of the books are about journeys. So maybe that's something you could have. Both of the books have monsters in them. What other books have you seen that have got monsters in them? You could also ask, how are the characters feeling? And why do you think they feel that way? So in one of my favorite books, Peace at Last, um, the daddy bear can't get to sleep. And at this point, you can look at the picture, draw out the clues from the picture, and from what's being said. How do you think Daddy Bear is feeling? Well, he might be feeling sad, he might be feeling upset, he might be feeling tired, and some of the older kids might use words like frustrated or annoyed. So really think about the setting and the characters, think about how they're feeling, where they're sitting, but also similar books they might have read. Try and make those links with them as well. So when your child is reading, ask them to read with expression. And a good time for this is when they're reading what a character is saying. It can be really over the top. Well, I don't want to do that. Um, and if they need to, get them to read it and then read over it again. So get them to read it out without expression and say, can you read that again without expression? Another good thing to do is talk about the punctuation on the page. So if you see uh, a full stop, make sure they pause and, and say to them, when we fit, see a full stop, that's where we take a pause. Um, what do you need to do if you read a question mark? And again, or an exclamation mark. So if it's a question mark, they need to have a question at the end. Um, so it needs to sound like a question. An exclamation mark. No, no. You know, they need to be really quite vocal with that. And again, they can go back over the sentence and read it again if they want. You don't have to go through a whole book. You don't have to sit there going through a whole book, especially if your child is at the early stages of their reading and it's taken them quite a while. I know sometimes it can be um, really frustrating and if you're reading it just before bed. Um, so just read a bit of the book um, and chat about it using the tips in this video. Just have a chat. So maybe even just read two pages, three pages, and then talk about what's going on in the book. Go back over it. Um, and it might make bedtime come just that little bit quicker. I hope that's been of help. As I say, I didn't go into detail on phonics. There's plenty of places you can go to look up the sounds. There's plenty of videos you can do with that. But again, it takes a lot of training for, for our teachers and it's our experienced teachers that actually deliver that phonics. So if the children, look, concentrate on the words that the children know and actually try and get them to do some sight words as well, that might be helpful. So I hope that's been of help. Um, and please keep letting me know if there's anything else that I can help with. Um, I will do my absolute best with that as well. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.